Welcome to Trading Lounge and the European Indices, but I thought just start with the S&P here, and uh, with the S&P we've got um, wave 3 here, an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave for wave 4. Wave 4 may get a bit more complicated, however, um, if this market does move up from here, then the safe trade would be at um, on the closest largest number of support, so the 2900 here. So just keep an eye on, on this here for, um, for this market because this will also relate to the DAX as well. So with, for the S&P, um, if the market can climb back on top of uh, 2900, then we're on the right track because that particular pattern to the downside is pretty much what we've experienced here on the daily chart with the DAX here. We're working through an Elliott Wave Triangle from Wave 3 here, an A and a B and a C and a D and an E wave here. So let's look into this B wave here on the four hour chart here. And of course we want that to lift up as well. So in this case here, we can pretty much call a low in. We'll just check that in a moment. But obviously we need to see some moves to the upside. I mean, at first glance here, it still seems like there's still another um, move to the downside uh, here for this. Let me just go in and check on the hourly chart uh, here. Um, this is the 50-60% retracement level uh, area through here. So um, let me just check on the cash market for this here as well for the DAX. Just, um, just going aside here for a moment I just want to have a look at um, this particular spike here and how that shows up on the on the on the DAX um, yeah look it doesn't really sort of play out too strongly um, there it's only a small spike but even so we would need to look at that as um, as wave from well of course from wave B to wave C here would be looking for uh, five waves to the downside. Um, I could have had this labelled as, um, uh, let's bring this across here, I could have had this labelled as an, for a B wave here, I could have it labelled as an A and a B and a C and a D and an E wave here as well, uh, and then look for five waves down, but I still think we've got a little bit further to, um, to, to play out here, so, um, any particular rally from this particular point here, 38.2%. Um, so it looks like the wave four, one lesser degree. So if we call this wave one and two, it's still one, two, three. We might need to go to the tick chart just to, oops, wrong, wrong chart. Sorry, it's a volume chart. Um, let's go back in over here. I'll just get a bit more data in here. Yeah, so. <clears throat> Um, from that wave two sharp top that I was talking about, <clears throat> then we've got wave one and two, one and two and three, uh, and one, two, three, four, that's got to come over here, that's not quite right there, one, two, three, four, and five, nice sharp spike here too, so this sharp spike is just a recurring pattern of this one here, of what, that wave two, so um, one and two and three and four and five, so we've got our third wave here, this fourth wave here may or may not be finished, it can pull back to the fourth wave of one lesser degree, or to the 38.2% retracement level, so it could go a little bit higher, but um, it's obviously getting weaker now. Um, <clears throat> and then down into, I can't draw on this side of the tick chart, so, oops a daisy, just clear that up. Um, so wave five for a bounce off 12,000, so we can bring that in a little bit closer here, somewhere in amongst there an A and a B and a C wave here. So obviously, and this wave four can pull back to that wave four of one lesser degree. But if this one drops from here, then we can note that this one is lower than that one. So then we could probably bring this one back onto, onto this um, 12,100 here and look at it like that a little bit. Anyway, you get the picture. And then wave five down here. So it's kind of interesting in a way because if we get a move that's, I can't draw on this side of the price for the tick chart, but what I like to see is that um, I like to see a market come down, bounce off the large number, and then drop through. And then if it can climb back up and find support here, then you know it's, um, 
it's got half a silly chance of moving up from that point. So it all depends how you can recognise support at that particular point in time. So anyway, we can expect that to come down a little further. Okay, um, the Netherlands, the AEX. So last time we spoke, we're, we're still looking so the same same pattern. This is a one hour chart, however. So we've got our A wave top here. We've got an A here, an A and a B and a C for the B wave here. I'm not going to worry about that particular spike here. Last time we spoke, we'll, we were, I think we we're, were down here somewhere. So we're looking, I could see that we had wave one and two here. So, um, well, it's a little bit more than that, actually. That's, um, well, if you're drawing this out, that's one and two into here. And this is actually one and two into here. Oh, it's probably three and four in there. I've got to check. But there's certainly a fourth wave here. So we're, we have moved down, as it's sort of expected. Um, so we could even move lower from here as well. Um, let me just have a quick look on the tick chart to see if I can... That's tick by tick, that's no good. We want to go by 100 ticks. I mean, 20 ticks and 5 ticks and all those sort of things are quite helpful for drilling down into um, into things. I'll just have a quick look here. I won't make up too much time, but um, we've got 1 and 2 here and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. No, I can't see it. I have to spend too much time on it, but... Um, just coming back to that hourly chart, was it? Yeah. So the good news here is that um, this can drop a bit lower based on what the DAX is doing. Um, but um, if it finds the support back up here, then you can go for that. Um, on the interim here, if you um, if this low gets taken out here, then you can short that here as well. And the reason for that is because... Um, I'll just finish this off and then explain that. But, you know, the routine, though, um, market comes down, bounces, which is bounced, bounced off here, goes through, had another little bounce in, in amongst here, but eventually made a new low here and then come back up and retested it. And a lot of the times the market can just go here and, you know, build back on in a way like, you know, and go back up that way. But um, if it, if it, you know, if the sellers come in and the supply is stronger and whatnot, the, the, and this gets triggered here, then you got yourself a long trade. And then you can look down at the next uh, number uh, here. So also too, because it's pulled back through the 61.8% mark here, it, it, it hasn't gone through too much, but the fact that it's gone through and this little bounce retest here is actually retesting the 61.8% here as the resistance. So it kind of puts it into a... Um, uh, into a into a larger bearish trend uh, in a way, so um, so uh, yeah, so you can look at that here. So it may even pop down to this level down here. Moving over to the FTSE, I want to have a talk about the FTSE and um, uh, actually just before I leave the. Um, cross over to the channel and come back again. I just wanted to bring in the Germany mid cap here. This is the mid cap 50. And um, in this case here, um, I can see a, a clear bearish picture here. So um, from these tops here, we've got wave one and two here and probably one and two in it, but this is still got, this will be still more in here for this here. So I can see the Germany mid caps coming down to 24,000 at least at this point. I haven't put a lot of work into it, but I can see that this is one and two here. And this is probably one and two and three here and four and five for the third wave, the fourth wave and the fifth wave. So just to point out that this is a bearish trend here. Okay. Um, I want to have a look at a bit more with the with the FTSE here. This is the um, the monthly chart, and in this instance here, this is a little bit like Australia actually going through the same thing. And, and of course, Australia is a, a colony and a mining town. Well, but probably that's not really the case anymore, I guess, to a point. But um, 
Um, yeah, look, wave three and A and B and a C for wave four here. And then we've got five waves up here. Not They're not a great five waves. I mean, we've got five waves in this structure, which is good, and back for two. But this structure moving up through here, it's got five waves in it. Um, but it's got overlapping structures within this point here. I mean, if I've made a mistake anywhere in here, I mean, that can, that could be a top in play here. That's what I'm pointing out. Um, I've gone through all of this. I seem to be, I seem to be on the right track. I mean, if, if I've made a mistake in here, then the mistake would be that this is a wave three here. And if that's a wave three here, then, um, then this wave four would come back to the wave four of one lesser degree, wouldn't it? So um, it would be this one here. Or we could look at it um, as a 38.2% retracement level, so still down at this point here as well, so lower down. But what I want to have a look at here is what I wanted to say is that it does appear that, just in really simple counting, that this is actually completed here. But if there's a fourth wave to go up in the in the in the DAX uh, and 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 so on, then if I go to if I go to the weekly chart here, then I want to point this out here. This is a little bit complicated, and and you could probably throw tomatoes at me if you wanted to. But this wave four here, so moving up in for wave four, because before I just had copy that put putting this high here as the wave five. So just a different count here in terms of one and two here, and then one and two, and then one, two, three, four, five for the third wave, and then the fourth and the fifth. You'll say that the third wave is quite short here compared to wave one, but that's okay because wave five here is actually shorter than wave three. So wave three is not the shortest in this sequence from wave two to wave three here. Then it looks at this here in terms of, we've got three waves down here, and then we've got three waves up here, and uh, this is a little bit difficult to count in, in this space here. Um, so it's possible that we've got this expanding um, triangle pattern occurring here. And um, if that's the case, we can take from wave two here to the top of wave three here, roughly in here. And 38.2% retracement level is below the 7,000 area here, the same as this one here. So. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I was looking at this wave four being over here as well as an A and a B and a C here for wave four. That's possible then up for one and back for two and then up for three, four and five. That's possible um, and that's what we, we've been looking at, but I, I need to explore other possibilities as well. So unfortunately, um, this one here. So it's possible for this to move down to 7,000 here. The move down through here appears to be a corrective pattern. That's why I'm kind of looking at it in this triangle pattern way here. And the time that this is finished, then it would probably be in line with the DAX finishing as well. Okay, so it was just a thought, that's all, um, in this one. And taking that to the daily chart here would leave us with the scenario that we can have wave five top in. It could be part of this expanding triangle pattern here with wave D here. Um, um, and it also could be, um, copy this, it can be, I'll get two copies here. Our original count we can't throw out. I mean, this is the reason we have the video is is not to, you know is to be a little bit open minded and flexible and and just explore possibilities. It's possible that this could be wave one, and wave two uh, here. Um, this hasn't finished with five waves down through here. It, it, it's sort of really pushing it. I can see that we've got three waves here, so I'm wondering if this is actually one and two and three and fourth here, the fourth wave comes up and overlaps wave one, which is a bit naughty, but, um, uh, and then this one here, we would see five waves coming down into this space here and then moving up from there. Otherwise, that wave C, E of four here that I was looking at coming down to, well, we know that uh, within this space here somewhere would be the, the C, E of uh, four here, finishing that expanding triangle pattern uh, with all of that there. <clears throat> so, um, 
I don't know. I just don't know. Um, I'm just exploring. Now, this particular move to the upside here, I can only count three waves in that. So let's go in and have a look at what we do know. So I've gone over this uh, and over this move here. We were counting it up as a bullish move, weren't we? But um, I was anyway. And uh, so I had it with wave one and two and, and three, and then we were looking for wave four. But when, when this pulled through here, that was the end of, end of wave four because a wave four should have only come into around this space here anyway. Um, so it's left us with three waves to the upside. And if we've got three waves to the upside, then it's likely that we're going to take these lows out here. So in taking those lows out here, then we're looking at a five wave sequence to the downside here. So on the one hour chart here, just to drill down into that a little bit, I can see that we've got five waves here, which I can call as wave wave one. I mean, I've got... Um, uh, Anyway, um, the four-hour chart's a little bit different, but still wave wave one and two here that we're looking at. So I can see that we've got five waves in here for wave one, and, and this would be wave two here. Um, I haven't really pulled this apart here, or have I? I'll check in a moment. But any rally here would just be a simple little um, uh, A, B, and C here into either this little high here, um, or this is probably the 38.2% retracement level in here, uh, and then down here. But this wave B that I've got here, I, I've lined that up with the DAX, but also we need to consider this being... Um, wave 1, wave 2 and wave three this this if this was going to occur this was going to make the dax more bearish as well but i've kind of justified that haven't i by looking at the at the germany mid cap here and i'll just do wave four here because wave four would pull back to the wave four of one lesser degree here um so this would move back up here and you know a bit of a working across this level here and then down from that point so that's kind of my thinking and i want to have a look at at uh at the mib now italy and i want to have a look at on in the bigger picture <clears throat> so let's just go over this a little bit this is a monthly chart and with the s p 500 and <coughs> and the and the dax and all the rest of them we looked at uh, this low in here of being the low. So the S&P 500 um, from this point has made um, uh, new, new highs above here. Okay, they've been travelling up here. But the MIB really hasn't gotten up at all here. So it's a bit of a concern. So we know that this is... 20,000 here. I'll just put that in there roughly. It's probably obviously it's a bit lower. Um, and we call that a major trading level, major trading level two, just number two. That's close enough for the time being. So So in this case here, we could look at it as an A and a B and a C wave down through to here um, as wave four, but it's highly unlikely that this is going to, to, you know, to take out the tops here when all those other markets have already moved up. So this move up through here is in five waves. If you've got a keen eye, you can see one and two and three and four and five. So if we get five waves here, then after a correction, we're going to get another five waves here. OK, so um, it could be that we have wave one here and then back for wave two. And then in a smaller degree, we go up for wave one and we pull back for wave two, which takes us down at uh, about 18,000, probably 18, 18 and a half. But we can check that in a moment. The 61.8% mark. So basically, if this 
move down below the 61.8% mark here, then if it moved down past here, then all of this here would become a corrective pattern here. So an ABC is a corrective pattern and then it will take out those lows here. So we could pretty much expect to see it at that point down at 10,000, which is the next major level here. So this is a bit of a concern really, isn't it, I'd, I'd imagine. So um, yeah, so I just wanted to, you know, to, to, to work with us on this. So this is a little bit like the FTSE in a way, you know, um, I was looking at it in terms of if we go to a weekly chart here for a moment, so we can drill into that, we're dr going to drill into this bit here. So I was looking at it in terms of wave one and two here, and then looking at this as um, all of wave three up here, and I've counted all of this, so wave three here, and then having the A wave here, the B wave up here, and the C wave down here, looking for five waves down here, okay? Um, and we'll talk about those five waves in a minute, where, where are they and, and where do they finish and, and so on here. But it's also possible um, that we have this wave C here and, and we, we have ABC here and we move up and we have one more move up here in line with the DAX. It's also possible too that we move in line with the DAX where we have wave D here and wave E here and then we move up into wave five here. But what's concerning me a little bit is that it's also possible to have, if I can copy that here, where that A wave is here, I can put wave four in here, and then this wave five would come alive here. And if that wave five had come alive, then this one here, so if I can just remove that here, copy that here, and put where that B wave is, because we have that move up there. Um, I mean, I've counted all of this. I know that that's the top of the third wave. So it's possible to have this as the fourth wave in here and then the fifth wave up here as wave five. And that's not so silly because when you've got the extension in wave three here, that makes wave one here and wave five the same length. Rule of thumb, basically. So that's kind of fitting quite nicely, really. And, um, yeah, so... One of my things is is that, um, you know, uh, if this 20,000 becomes a retested resistance, it kind of opens up a can of worms, really. So if, if we take this low here and this high here, that can come down a little bit. That makes the 61.8% mark um, in here. Let's just put that in there. We really need to start. We need to start talking about this now. So really, that comes in at at eighteen thousand six hundred seven hundred here. So um, we could gravitate over towards the nineteen here. So we could say that um, look, if the twenty thousand become a retested resistance or breach or fail or support, then flags would go up. Um, in terms of being a bigger bearish picture all the way down through here then this, these numbers here, the 19,000 and the 18,600 here, would be cr highly critical. Because as I have always say, it's okay for a market to, to, uh, to come down, bounce off this, come down through here, and then, and then come back. And then that becomes our reference point to short at this point, you know, if the market comes down through. Because a lot of the times it will just come down well, let's just say 50% 50 of the time it will um, spike down, take out all the stops, find demand, all the rest of it, get back up on there and move back up there and all is sweet. But if this low gets taken out, that's when the bearish picture comes into play. Okay, so we see that time and time again and uh, here it is here. So um, in this case here, the markets came down, bounced back up, bounced through it, and then that's our reference point low here, this guy here, okay? We could bring the reference point low to here after a while and then to here, but basically it's gone back up above the level, okay? So we never, we wouldn't have gotten our short trade from here. 
but you get the it, it look it's just a very simple thing but it it works most of the time so it's a good thing to have that in there so in this move up here so i'm just going to save that so I, that's why i just want to talk about this bearish picture here and we need to talk about this here as well so i'm going to go to the daily chart here now so here i know we've got little one and two and three and four and a b c for four and up for five here to make wave one and back for wave two then i can see we've got wave one and two here nice strong third wave a third of the third then we've got one and two and three and four and five here for for this one so we can have uh, an extension in in this fifth wave here um, as one and two here and uh, three and four and five here so this is where i was calling the third wave in here um, I could count all this a little bit different, and, but it'll still come to the same conclusion of getting the top here. So it doesn't matter if you've got another count, you'll still end up in the same position here. And, you, and you'll have to ask yourself, um, is this move down here wave A and B here? And if this is wave B, then this will be wave C coming down here. We can talk about that in a moment. But if not, well, then this wave four here has got to come into play. And then this makes, even though we've got wave B here, this makes wave five of C here. This is this blue wave C, remember that? So I'll just put that there in there so we know. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so the question is, is, is that, do we have five waves down here for wave C? Um, or do we have the triangle pattern that the DAX is going through? So the DAX has still got further to go with all of that. So within this here, um, yeah, let's go to the four hour chart to make this a little bit easier to look at. So with this one here, we're looking at one and two in here, all of the third wave here, nice and long, strong, ABC for the fourth here. It's possible to have the wave four triangle pattern over here, but whichever way I look at all of this, I still come up with a problem each time of one of the rules being broken. Um, and the most, out of the three rules, the one that gets broken the most in, in, in derivative is, is wave four overlapping wave one here. So I'm thinking this can be wave one and A and a B and a C for wave two. There's five waves here for wave three, so it's not a problem. Um, this move up here, I can count it as corrective or I can count it as, as in, impulsive. So um, yeah, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a joker in the pack really, so I'm not quite sure about it. Um, but lo logic would tell me one and two and three and four here, even though it overlaps and then wave five down here okay the thing with wave five though is that um from wave four to wave five here i'll be looking for five waves and the thing is is that um i can already count one and two and three and four and five in here okay so i have to label this either the low here right but if this so i'll get a horizontal line there on the cash market if this is breached here right goes down below this one here then i can't put wave five here i i'll have to look at this as wave one here so i have to move that over here put this wave one here and then have this as the abc for wave two here and then we're coming down into the next sequence here and it's going to be you know, if it does move down through here, there's going to be a bounce off here and then come through and it's going to go back again and so on and so on. But this wave five here, it won't be able to be there anymore. So I'll have to move that down here. So moving this up here. Okay, I'll just delete that. So yeah, wave three is going to be the longest in this. Uh, the the 20,000 is going to stall it and it's going to skew the wave count in here so it's going to be quite difficult to count it as it migrates from one side to the other here but we need to we need to know that um, the first thing is is that if this is wave one here then we know that if I move that then wave three is going to be um, would be 
below that there. So that's one thing that we could look at because wave three is not going to be the shortest in this pack. So we'd expect wave three to move down here further uh, and wave four and wave five, wherever that's going to pan out through here and then wave four and then wave five here. So, um, you know, maybe we have to look at wave four being all the way down here. Um, and if this is not the case, then we need to look at this as a mu in a much more bearish picture here. So we know the 61.8% retracement level for, for all of this move up was roughly around, uh, it was roughly around here somewhere, wasn't it? 8,600, 700, somewhere in there. So we know that if this becomes the retested resistance in here, then we know that we've got more of a bearish picture. So we really want to see all of this here sort of, you know, being supported at this level here, because if all this becomes here, the resistance, normally when I'm looking at a large number, um, we do this with every number. Um, so this is the closest, this is the number that we're working with. And then we have group one above. So one, two, and three. So if support was found on, on number three here, then we'd be going up from that. And then the below this is group two. So the 18,000 and this 72 number in here and the 65. So if any of this becomes the retested resistance, normally the 72 in here, then if that becomes the retested resistance, then we're in a bearish picture from that point. Okay, so um, you can just 17,200. I'm just going to put that in orange. So now we know, now we're looking closer to um, a much <clears throat> the a, a much bigger bearish picture. We know we know when it's letting us. We we, we know you know if this if these guys become the retested resistance in here, then we know that we're going down to ten thousand. That's what I'm trying to say here. So, um, yeah, let's just sort of see how we go with this here at the moment. I'm just going to save this. So I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I'm saying. Um, in Elliott terms, this is in terms of patterns and the trading levels, this is what we're sort of, you know, we have to work through. Um, so just on the one hour chart, we were looking at um, last time we spoke, we're looking at wave one and two and three and four and five here. And that was fine. And then we're looking for a move up into this space here. We didn't quite get up there. Um, and then I was looking, thinking, well, um, perhaps uh, we've got an A and a B and a C wave that's going to take us back up into that space. And that could still be the case, by the way. Um, uh, but um, yeah, I'm just not, I'm not quite, sh I'm just not quite sure um, of this. If those other markets are going to be pushing lower, then um, we'll see this market obviously push lower into here as well. I don't think the tick chart's going to help out much. Okay, I've done a little bit of work here, so. Um, right, okay, so I was looking all of this here, I was looking at all, all of that as, as being corrected. I've got this here as an A and a B and a C here. This is the tick chart, an A, B and C. So I'm just, and I've labelled it the wave A here, but um, uh, it's it's correct, it's, it's, it's corrective, so it can make new lows from here. But if we're counting this down, it'll be wave one and two here, and then one and two and three and four and five into here, wave four over to here, and then coming down into wave five here. This little pattern here, it, off the low here, this is corrective here. That looks like it's corrective too. So it, it, can, it, whoops, it can go higher up into here, but because this is corrective, we'll still see a move lower from, uh, fr from this area here. So expect it to, to, um, to, to come lower. And that's why I was thinking that it would take this low out here. I mean, we can have this as the A wave here and a B wave can take the low out here and we can still come back up for the C wave here. So I really just don't know what, what we've actually got here just yet with, with all of this. So um, uh, let's just keep an eye on the German mid cap, which is obviously pointing down the S&P 500. We're expecting that to push up. Um, 
if that pushes up, um, then the DAX will probably go with it, and then this we could look at this as an as an as an A wave and a B wave, and look at getting five waves out of this here for a C wave here. Um, but I don't know that yet, so I haven't got a um, I haven't got a trade in here for you on this one. It, today was more about just looking at the bigger picture. Um, but I guess if five hundred becomes the support, then that would be the one to. Um, to, to run off here, okay? But otherwise, I mean, to the long side, if 500 becomes a tested support, trade long. Um, otherwise, just look at the rally to rally here, and then we'll probably see it pull down to the 20,000 uh, area here. All right, um, thanks for tuning in. Cheers.